sometimes taking the first step is the hardest. This is very true when it comes time to get started on something like Pinterest. You may in the back of your mind feel like you would like to give it a try, but something might be holding you back. It could be the fear of the unknown, the idea that you will have a learning curve, or that you don't want to get sucked into the Pinterest world and end up spending too much time there. Let's take a quick look at the things that might be holding you back from getting started. By the time you finish this course, you will know more about Pinterest than those who have been using it for a while. If you fear the learning curve, don't. The good thing is is that Pinterest's learning curve is very small. The site is very easy to understand and simple to use. If you worry about the amount of time you might put into Pinterest, that is a legitimate concern. It's easy to get hooked on social media sites and end up spending half your day using them. Meanwhile, the phone is ringing, the oven timer is going off, and the grass is in desperate need of mowing. Like anything else, you will need to make the commitment to be disciplined with it. It might be a good idea to give yourself a set amount of time each day, say 15 to 20 minutes. You could even pick a specific time of day as your Pinterest 15 to just browse the boards, or perhaps set aside one hour per week as your dedicated Pinterest time. You would be surprised at how much you can actually see in just 15 minutes a day on Pinterest. Pinterest is not something to be afraid of. The learning curve is much smaller than other sites, and you can control the amount of time you put into it each day. So let's get started. Creating a Pinterest account is free and easy. It's difficult to beat that in today's expensive world. To get started creating your account, log on to the site at www.pinterest.com. If you are someone who already uses Facebook, you will have the option to create your Pinterest account by using your Facebook information. All you do there is click on the Sign Up with Facebook box. If you do not have a Facebook account, or if you choose not to use it, you will click on the box that says Sign Up with Email. Enter your email address and create a password. Then click on the Sign Up button. Pinterest will send you a confirmation email after you register. However, you can complete that step after the Pinterest tour. After you hit Sign Up, Pinterest will ask you to provide some basic user information. Enter your username and personal information, then select Come On In. The next few screens provide you with a brief introduction to Pinterest. Click on Next to proceed through your tour. The final step of the tour brings you to a variety of categories to explore. Feel free to scroll through the list and find something that interests you. I think I will select Travel. This demonstration will show you how items will be displayed in the Pinterest feeds. Selecting an image will bring you to a more detailed view. If you like the image, you can save the image by hitting the Pin It button. But before you can pin it, you have to select a board for your pin. You can either name your own board or choose one from the drop-down menu. Then hit Pin It. Now it's time to close this example and finish the tour. But before you start having too much fun, Pinterest will kindly remind you to go back to your confirmation email. To confirm your registration, all you have to do is log into your email account. You should see a message from Pinterest asking you to confirm your email. Just click on the link in the email, which should bring you back to Pinterest. This time, you will need to enter the email address and password you registered with earlier to gain access to the site. Now your account is ready. To get you started, Pinterest will display a customized selection of images. You may or may not have interest in them, but don't worry, there are millions of other options to choose from. Go ahead and click on the following interesting boards link. Before you can view your main feed, you will need to start following five different boards. Don't worry, you can always change those boards later. As you scroll through the page, you have the option to follow the boards that interest you. You can either select an item from this list or explore the categories listed down the left side of the window. After you have selected five boards to follow, you will be able to go to your homepage. Your homepage, which is called your feed, will be a collection of images from all five boards you chose to follow. At this point, you can click on these images to learn more about each item, find more boards, and even find individual people to follow. Perhaps some of your friends are already using Pinterest. It's easy to connect with them. To find your friends, type their name into the search box at the top left and hit enter. Select Pinners. You may find several people with the same name, but you should be able to identify your friend by the profile image. When you select their profile, you will be able to view all of their different boards. You might choose to follow all of their boards or select a few that interest you. For example, my friend April has many different boards. I think I will choose to follow just a few such as For the Home, Sweet and Savory Recipes, and Craft Ideas. 
If you would like to follow your Facebook friends, Pinterest makes it easy to find them. Click on your name in the upper right corner and select Find Friends from the drop-down menu. If you signed into Pinterest using Facebook, a list of your Facebook friends should automatically appear. If your friends are not listed, you may send them an invitation to join Pinterest. It's important to note, however, that you do not need to follow only your Pinterest friends. There are many people out there with interests similar to your own. You may follow anyone's board. However, it's a good idea to review your account settings before you start interacting with others. Your account settings allow you to control your public profile and privacy features. To review and edit your settings, click on your name in the upper right corner and select Your Profile and Pins from the drop-down menu. This will bring up the basic information screen where you may change your email address, password, language, country, gender, search privacy, search history, and recent contacts. If you don't want people finding your boards in search engines, you will want to change your search privacy to reflect that. It defaults to allowing search engines to find your boards when people do searches. If you prefer to hide your Pinterest searches, you have the option to click Clear Recent Searches. Likewise, you can clear any recent contacts you have made. In the Profile section, you can edit your name, add a photo of yourself, and enter any other information you might like to include in your public profile. Under Email Notifications, you can choose whether or not you would like to receive a message when someone repins one of your pins, likes your pin, follows you, comments on a pin, sends you a pin, and so on. You may choose to receive these notifications as they happen or just once per day. There are other options in this area that will give you the chance to post your activity automatically to Facebook and Twitter. Also notice at the bottom of this window, you will find a button to deactivate your account if you choose to do so. While it's fun to follow other boards, you will want to create your own boards. Why? Because you'll find things on other people's boards and on the internet that you may want to keep, organize, and come back to again and again. That's where your boards come in handy. They become a vault to store your treasures. To create your own boards, click on your screen name on the top right side of the page. This brings you to your main board page.